I'm Michael Clark and we're here to talk about on-farm cold storage. What to do for the small farm to keep that product fresh, to get it to market, to take the field heat out, to make sure you hold your product at the best possible temperature. Here we have a refrigerated truck. We'll look at walk-in coolers. We'll look at just regular room air conditioners. We'll look at cool bots and special cool room construction. We'll look at taking old vehicles or old broken down trailers and turning them into cold storage. Let's find out how to make cold storage affordable for the small farm. So let's look at this cold storage unit here, which is a refrigerated truck. This is actually an old U-Haul truck. We got a regular used body from a, an old refrigerated truck that the truck was broken down, but the reefer unit was still good. It's got both an electrical system and an engine driven system. We'll take a look at how that can allow us to run the engine to keep things cold or run it while it's on the road, but also when it's at the farm, it can plug right in. Not a regular backup electrical unit, which is often uh, minimal, just enough cooling to keep things until the truck's running again. This is a full separate electrical unit. They'll operate independently. Also works as a backup. All right, so let's go take a look at a walk-in cooler. Here is what we call the 34 degree cooler because for most produce we want to be just above freezing. So we set it for about 34 degrees and it runs between 36 and 34 degrees. Try not to get too cold because if we freeze things that's just as bad as not keeping it cold enough. So this is an old grocery store unit that we've retrofitted and rejuvenated some for keeping our produce. So we can see buckets of berry juice, also greens, and a regular refrigeration unit, and a special control, which we see here, the actual air temperature coming out of the unit. This is actually our frost control that prevents frost. There's another thermostat inside, and a remote indicating temperature display here. This, again, was a used unit that we built on site, put it back together, did some floor insulation, and we're able to keep produce, fresh produce in here. Let's take a look at some, just some cold room units. We'll go out and take a look at an old truck body we've got that we added a regular house heat pump to, so it both heats and cools. This is our seed storage and basil storage that we want to be about 45 to 50 degrees year round. Even when it's zero outside, we don't want it to be less than 45, and if it's 100 outside, we don't want it to be less than 50. So we used, instead of a refrigeration walk-in cooler style system, we used a heat pump system from a house. Now this requires refrigeration work where tubing has to be run, evacuated, and, and uh, refrigeration tools. Sometimes that's a difficult situation for small farms, so they might elect to do something with just a refrigerator wall unit. But let's take a look at what regular household AC units can be kind of hacked to do. It's got an inter internal unit that blows the cold air, an outside unit that does the compressor just like your AC or heat pump at home. Now that enables us to have heating in the wintertime as well as cooling in the summertime. So here we are inside the seed cooler, basil cooler, our sort of 50 degree cooler. We've got a regular household air conditioning unit, a heat pump unit, so it'll both heat and cool. This is the internal unit that you normally see inside the house. This is the evaporator coil for the cooling. This is large enough for a very small capacity trailer that it will cool in just a few minutes and then cycle off so we won't have a frost buildup. If we had frost buildup problems, we would add a frost control to the fins of the coil. We'll take a look upstairs where we have the actual compressor unit. So we're on top of that used truck body and we turned into the 50 degree cooler. This is the regular heat pump condensing unit, the outdoor unit, the outdoor side of a household heat pump. Right now we're in cooling mode because it's summertime. In the wintertime, it switch over to heating mode and we get the same efficiency of a heat pump to prevent frost inside our cooler. We happen to mount this on top of the unit just for convenience. It's not really the best location because it's in the hot sun in the summertime. It'd be better if this was off in the shade. That's one of the ways we can make things more efficient. 
Now, speaking of efficiency, let's take a look at some of the other things we can do to make our condensing units more efficient for walk-in coolers. So here we are at the condensing unit of the 34 degree cooler. Now this is a two horsepower unit. Pretty big, would be much larger than any air conditioner you'd be able to purchase for a cool room or a cool bot room. Not quite as big as the three horsepower unit that we use as that whole house heat pump. But this is specifically designed for refrigeration. It has a couple of modifications for efficiency. This is a water coil, and you can see here the hot gas coming out of the compressors. And water is preheated here, so cold well water is coming in and it's being preheated by the hot refrigeration gases into this hot water tank like a solar hot water storage. So it's preheated water for our washing. So we're capturing some of the heat coming off of our produce in our walk-in to be used to preheat water that we use for sanitary washing. Another enhancement is a secondary fan. So if the primary condensing fan is inadequate for a high temperature day, a secondary fan will come on. This is one of the cheapest ways to really improve your high temperature performance and reject heat performance of any of the condensing units, whether it's a whole house air conditioning unit, a window air conditioning unit with a cool bot. Additional heat rejection cooling really helps that efficiency. Now, if it's not necessary, you'll hurt your efficiency running an extra fan when it's not needed. So a thermostat to control that fan is good. We can see here the hot gas side coming out in through our cooling system is condensed by the air as well as the water and we have a liquid refrigerant here. That liquid refrigerant is boiled in our evaporator and comes back cold. You can see the condensation on this unit. So the, the unit is now running. This tube is getting colder. This tube really won't get warm. If it is getting hot on your unit, that means there's inadequate cooling happening at the condenser. And some of the refrigeration is going to have to be used to remove the heat from that hot fluid going into the walk-in. So that's one of your keys to when your unit's undersized or is not able to reject enough heat. Now once we've got all of these great walk-in cooler systems, what happens in a power failure? So there are a couple of ways we can go with backup generation. We can go with small units, we can go with full size, automatic, cover the whole farm, cover the whole facility. It's always good to have more than one system to back up. Here we have a system that will run all of our coolers. Now for the small farm, there's often problems with not enough budget, not enough money to do everything you want to do, not enough funding. So at a minimum, have at least a small construction size gasoline generator, about six, 7,000 watts, something that can at least run one of your coolers. Here we've got a gasoline unit, we can run our refrigerated truck, we can run one of the walk-ins. It's something just in case we have multiple days or many hours of power failure don't want to lose that temperature we've achieved on our quality product. at just regular room air conditioners. We'll look at cool bots and special cool room construction. So here we see a regular air conditioner, the cool bot. The cool bot power supply is a separate power supply. It doesn't really have to modify the electronics of the air conditioner. We have a small heater here that's attached to the sensor that's normally sensing the room temperature of the air conditioner. And it's overriding the room temperature with a small heater got its own room thermocouple to measure the room. I'm going to hit it with my fingers and we'll see these numbers go up as it very rapidly senses the, the room temperature. And 
this little heater blink light here, these bottom room fins heater power, the heater light will come on when it's trying to tell the heater to run and fool the air conditioner thermostat into thinking the room temperature is really 81 degrees even though it's sensing 70, so it's forcing the air conditioner to run. It will do that until the fin sensor sees that the fins are beginning to get frosty and they're frosting up and then it will shut the air conditioner off leaving the fans running so that it air defrosts and gets rid of the frost on the fins. So we can see now uh, the heater light has stopped coming on, the air conditioner is running full, the, the coils are getting cold but they haven't frosted up yet. Once they get frosty, then this sensor will feel that cold temperature and the cool bot will let the air conditioner shut back off. Uh, and it won't be a rapid thing, it's just going to stop heating the sensor and allow the sensor to feel the room temperature, which is going to be below the set point of the room air conditioner. The fans will keep running continuously. The fans will always run. The compressor is just going to cycle on and on. Uh, very similar to a normal walk-in where the evaporator fans are always running. Uh, if you shut the evaporator fan off, you wouldn't have the air defrost and you also wouldn't be mixing air in the room. Now the amount of air that's, that actually flows through these coils is a little bit less than would be in a, in a large uh, walk-in unit. So that's going to be part of the power savings is you've got a, a smaller compressor, smaller fans, and so it doesn't have as much capacity. So we loaded this room up with a whole bunch of hot stuff. It would take hours for that temperature to come down. Uh, right now we're in a, a fairly low mass room because it's all very well insulated. There are just a few containers in. Uh, some, some flowers. They've been here for a while, so they're already at that temperature. So it's responding pretty quickly to us opening and closing the door and coming in. Now just opening and closing the door has gotten a significant amount of moisture in because it's pretty humid. And we're starting, and you can kind of see some of the, you got some moisture inside in there. Um, one of those things to watch in the cool bot is when you look through here and you see daylight, because the box that a normal air conditioner is mounted in is not sealed and there's foam strips. So you might want to get your carpenter to, to fix those little gaps because what will happen is that moisture will come in and it will get on these controls and it will start acting funny. So right now we're starting to get frost. Just beginning to see frost. See how I touch it with my fingers, I melt the frost. It's just beginning to get some frost on these coils. You don't really even have to have this, this strip here. This is a seal from the old front grill. So it, the, the mechanics of how it works is almost exactly like a regular um, refrigeration temperature, not a freezing temperature, but a refrigeration temperature walk-in. It's just a, a combined unit, or what they call a package unit, where the compressor and the evaporator and condenser are all one unit. You could get a similar thing um, as a package uh, refrigeration unit for a walk-in, and it probably would cost two or three thousand dollars. It would be able to cool more volume of heat. Um, the biggest thing that, that happens is for small growers and farmers is they don't have the tools or the license to even buy the components to repair the thing. So it, it becomes a real issue like, hey, I'll throw away the air conditioner and get another one. Um, and so, so Ron, when he invented the CoolBot, that's what he was doing. And it, and it used to be just a little metal box with a bunch of little lights and knobs and things that he built himself. Uh, and he experimented in, to make it work. Now he's having them mass produced and he's put a, a fancier processor in there and, and uh, they've got these 
these sensors are well sealed now. These things used to get moisture and stuff in them and start acting up. They're doing a lot better now. See, we're starting to get some good frost on here. Um, yeah, if you can zoom in on that frost, it would be great. So we're getting really close now to the room temperature. I'm going to keep it from thinking that the room is the right temperature by holding this thing. See, we're going up in the numbers. And that's going to... See now the heater light cut off? That's going to force the air conditioner into a condition that would normally ice up and is the reason why you would not be able to use the air conditioner without the cool box because it would ice up solid in one afternoon and then it wouldn't work anymore. So it's cut its heater off. So it's now going to let the air conditioner start to feel the room temperature, recognize that, oh my goodness, it's plenty cold enough. and It'll shut the compressor off, but you have the, the air conditioner set in the mode that the fans always run. So the fan will keep running and will do an, what's called an air defrost. When you described it, uh, Kathy, the first time you ran it the first day, it got all frosty. So it's just so much humidity, it had to do the work to get that humidity out. But it, it got to the right temperature within two hours. Uh -huh. It was a uh, May or a June day, uh -huh. nice and warm, and it was 45 degrees within two hours of turning it on yeah. from scratch. That's great. And you've got four inches of foam. Yes. So it's like R30 insulation in the whole room. Um, and there's there are very little, you know, door opening and closing. It's not like a, a 7-Eleven beverage cooler that every 10 seconds somebody's opening the door and pulling things out. So that's how you get by with a smaller unit. Well, you know, that's a pretty good choice for a building because the concrete block is already, you know, a good isolation and it's mm -hmm. not going to rot. And then you've added four inches of foam on the inside. Constructing the space, all the, the materials and the labor involved did cost, you know, what was the main cost. Uh -huh. But then the AC unit and the cool bot. So the AC you know, unit and the cool bot, less than a thousand bucks. But then probably the two or three thousand. Two thousand, yeah. yeah. But buying a walk-in, if you just bought right. a walk-in kit, that's probably four or five thousand. Exactly. So, so for the same four-inch insulated room, but you would still need that regardless of what kind of refrigeration mm -hmm. you're doing. So I'd heard from other flower farmers that this was just quick, cheap, and easy. I think it's perfect yeah. for flowers. Yeah. Because 45 degrees is what you want. You don't really want anything, you know, close to freezing. Um, and you don't have huge thermal mass. You know, your flowers are fairly low mass. When right. you bring them in, it's going to, right. you know, and, and you're not so much trying to get the core of the flower cold as just not have hot air around it. Right, exactly. Not like a melon where it's like, I need to get the inside of that right, melon that's cold. that's true. Or a lettuce that, you right. know, if I don't get the core of the lettuce cold. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a different, or berries, yeah. it's kind of a different thing. And you don't really want too much air movement on the flowers, because you'll dry out and you know, mm -hmm. desiccate petals and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it probably works just great. So far, so good. Get back Excellent. to me in two or three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look at just regular room air conditioners. We'll look at cool bots and special cool room construction. We'll look at taking old vehicles or old broken down trailers and turning them into cold storage.